Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to be covering the uh, two tabs on two tabs today. Um, this will be on the preferences tab. Right over here, we're going to be covering this general tab, and then we'll be covering the images tab. So why don't we just get started on uh, the general tab. The first option here is what, what language you want to output it in. Uh, I generally output it as English, but then I know some people, you know, they've got, well, I've got relatives over in Norway or over in German. You can have it output the, uh, the uh, you can have it output in those languages. Now it should be noted that even though let's say you tell it to output in German, um, any notes will not be automatically translated into German. Uh, here's here's an example like Descendants book. You know, it's just goes through here. You know, it's the standard stuff. But now this is the output where, where I told it to output in German, you know, so it's, uh, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce that. <laughs> um, but you'll notice now down here in notes, uh, you know, this wording is, you know, German, but then, you know, well, you see all well, right here was named this is a uh, the fact note. Well, that was written in English. So likewise, just because because you told it to output in German doesn't mean the notes will get translated into German. You would have to do that yourself. Um, and I know some people, you know, with the person notes, I, I've I've known some people where they will write the person note in English, and then the, say they'll put the same thing in the research note, but then translate that into German. So when they're doing the German book, they'll tell it to print the research note, not the fact no or the person note, and vice versa. Um, unfortunately, like for fact notes, you either got a fact note or you don't. You don't have the option, like of having. Um, you you don't have that option, but. Uh, mainly the big thing I just wanted you to be aware of is even though, say, you told it to German, any notes will still be in whatever language they were uh, originally written in. Um, file format for when you want to save it, you know, rich text format, you know, docx. These are Word documents or the older Word document fo uh, formats. Open, do de open document text. That is uh, um, for um, Open Office, I believe it is. Uh, the PDF and PDF slash A dash one B. The difference between PDF and PDF slash A is a lot of like if you send your book into some place to get published, uh, like Lulu or you know, there's any number of them. They will usually prefer it in PDF slash A because all the fonts are embedded. Uh, because it's like if you if you ever get a document, you can only see those that text as if you got that same font on your computer. Uh, but if you ever use some specialized fonts, you can't always rely on the, the other person having it. With PDF slash A, it embeds those fonts right into the PDF document, so it'll display the same for everyone. Uh, EPUB, so if you've got a tablet, uh, you can also import them as uh, images. Um, I didn't do a sample, but like if you've got a book, a 500 page book, it will create 500 JPEG images. Uh, same thing with PNG. It'll, but these are just different image file formats. It'll save each page as its own graphic. Um, uh, now, uh, let's go back to Word. You can tell it, well, I'm, I'm just gonna, yeah, rich text format. 
Oh yeah, I don't have open office, so it's not selecting the word processor. But now if you do it in Word, you've got this option of saying update all fields, create master sub documents. Update all fields, that is what will update the table of contents. Uh, let's just go back here. This table of contents, this is a generated item. If you actually look at the Word document, you won't see this wording, uh, and I'll show that in a little bit. Same thing with the index of places or individuals. These are all uh, generated items, as well as any references to media that might be attached to multiple people. Uh, that's what the update all field does, is it will generate them. And like I said, if you select PDF, you don't have any option. It has to generate them. Uh, with rich te rich text format or these others, uh, Word can actually generate them. Um, and I'll get back to that in just a little bit. Uh, let me just go back to Word here. Creating master and sub documents. For me, with the newer, if you've got newer words, it's not as big of an issue. Uh, Older versions of Word, it, it had, I believe, a 512 megabyte limit for a maximum file size. Well, if you got a document with lots of images, even though you're not going to really edit the images in Word, they take up size and they count towards that 512 megabytes. Uh, this will create it into uh, sub and master documents. Uh, so you'll see here I created, um, I'll just open up both of these. The sub document, so here's the Jacqueline, da, da, da. Yeah, see right here, this contents, Here, here's where the table of contents would be. Uh, but it's not generated. And then uh, each family section then gets their own little sub document. So here, this is referencing this other document, um, which is this one right here. And the purpose is, is like if you're doing a bunch of editing, and like I said, with those size constraints, uh, it's not as uh, uh, intent. Uh, resource intensive on your computer for editing uh, because it just breaks it into smaller documents. Uh, and then likewise here, this index places, see it's not updated. It's not updated and it even tells you what to do here. Control A, then press F9, and then depending upon how your computer, I cannot update this index. Oh, I had that document open, so that's why. So you just have this one and then, no. Oh. Well, if it's one document, you don't have an issue. Like I said, I don't work with these master sub documents too often. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why that didn't work. Um, Well, I'll have to research that more and get back. I'm going to just move on. Um, but that uh, that is what the master and sub documents were. And then likewise, view document after creation. Um, all that does is once it generates a book, it will pop up. It'll pop up the book, you know, kind of like this. Um, so you can review it, you know, that, so that's completely optional. Uh, now, the next thing here will be is if we're going to include sources and citations. Some people want them, some people don't. If you're going to donate them to a uh, a genealogy library or a hist historical society, include the source citations. Um, 
if you're just doing it for family members, it's like me personally, 95% of my family members, they don't care about the sources. They just want the stories, the information. Um, I do have two cousins. They are very interested. So I'll generate the citations. Uh, without the citations, uh, like I said, you know, it just prints the information. It doesn't cite, you know, which sources. It's just basically the information and the stories. Um, if you start telling it to do uh, citations here, uh, play the first option here is as footnotes. Then it, uh, let's just get down here. Then you'll notice, okay, names here. Okay, you're going to have the, the references. So we got six sources that support his name fact, blah, blah, blah. And then here they are. They're listed down here as footnotes. So at the end of each page, any footnotes there will be here. Likewise, second page. You know, here are the footnotes for this page. That's what a footnote is. It's just the footnotes that that are on that page. Um, now you got some options here for, um, let me go back here, including the citation text and web address. And now here, then there's also pre-selected citation web address. Uh, I had to get clarification from Stefan on these because, uh, well, the examples I was doing, it wasn't showing any difference. Uh, and this all plays down to if you include these pre-selected, you have to actually go to the source itself. Um, so like on this birth, and so I'll just do this one. It's whether or not uh, these items are checked or not. So if they're checked, uh, I haven't noticed any difference. If they're unchecked, that's where the difference will play into effect as to whether they'll display the citation text and what web address here. Um, so you'll see, I'll concentrate here on number six here because I, I, I was just telling just to display the the, the text. Uh, let me get back here in the family uh, book creator. Uh, so I was just telling it just to include the citation text. And then let's see here. And this was without the citation text. And now this was without... Uh, that include reference and notes checked. Uh, yeah, that was the same. And so here it is then where it displays the web address too. And like I said, and it's it's hot in PDF format or Word, it's it it is uh linkable. So here I could just tell it to go right to this and um I'm not going to go to that for here, but uh, bu -bu -bu. Uh, citation notes. Uh, some citations can have notes. And let me, I'm just trying to think where. Da, da, da. One of these had a note. Sorry about that. Let me just go into one of these that has a. Oh, yeah. Okay.
No, oh, there was a site that 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 site does the source have a note? Well, here I'll just type a note. Um, this is a source note. No, probably updating it for everyone that's got that nineteen twenty note, but. So if I go in here, and this book doesn't take too long to generate, because I'm telling it, okay, to display the source note. Create the document. Okay, so here we Oh, this saved it in Word format, pardon me. I want it in PDF format. I will just add, uh, answer one question while this generates. Someone asks, is PDF A, you don't get the up, updated all field note or the update all fields. That's because you don't have to work. Family book career has no choice but to update all the fact note or update all the tables. Update, update all the fields. With Word, since your odds, odds are you're going to be editing the document anyway, uh, you're gonna to have to update the fields anyway, so why have Family Book Reader update the fields when it's gonna to have to redo it again later? Um, so, yeah, so here's the, yeah, so here's the 1920. Yeah, so here, it printed this is a source note you know basically it will print that source note so and then likewise uh if you want to you know any notes in family tree maker you can make private so that's would just say okay whether or not you want to print private citation notes as well uh and like I said, a citation, um, let me just go back to this note. And really all this padlock just makes it, okay, that's a private note now. Oh. Yeah, it's just good on. So, um, that's all that does. And then uh, the other one was, the other one, okay. The other one was for counting like the media items and uh, Actually, I think I had. I didn't want to be saved. Or ba basically, if the. Let me just regenerate it. Or actually, I should have that here. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Oh yeah, this is down on Jacqueline. Yeah, it says right here, you know, source includes one media item or two media items, however many media items. You know, my third great grandfather I've got his will, so that's about 47 images with all the probate information. Um, you know, so it's just if you want it to say how many media items there are. Uh, now, the next thing will be is, uh, now here you saw like, okay, we didn't have citations or we had them as footnotes. You could also put them as endnotes. So rather than taking up these pages uh, like this on every page, you can have it as endnotes. Um, let's see here. Da, da, da. Yeah, so basically on here, you know, we don't have any footnotes, but we have them now as endnotes and they're before the bibliography. And all bibliography just kind of lists your sources. Uh, so you can have it just near the end of the document. Over here, you got the option. Um, yeah, that was before bibliography that I showed you. There's end of a document where basically it's the same thing, only a different location. Where you'll see here, here's a bibliography. The end notes are right here at the very end after the index of places and individuals. They're literally at the end of the document. Um, and then you got the option for, uh, basically don't use footnotes and notes. You still want them, but embed the source citations. Uh, so the, 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 uh, citations are printed basically right with the information itself. So if you start looking at John Candy, okay. Here it's starting to say, okay, well, we got this National Cemetery one. Uh, details, you know, we there. Remember, there are six citations. Well, here they are, all listed right here. The six citations. So it it literally embeds them. There are no footnotes or endnotes, you know, because they're all embedded right with. Okay, here. Here's their name. Here's my sources for that name. You know, here's my sources for everything. And then it will do this uh, IBID, which is, you know, same as before, just to save some space. Uh, okay, next thing is like, okay, what language uh, you want this interface in? You've got English, German, Swedish. Uh, till German, okay, it's, it's going to change. It's going to close down. We have to relaunch it. Uh, I mean, typically you're going to pick one language, so you're not going to be switching them all. Um, so now here, everything's in German, you know. Uh, and the same thing for uh, Swedish. Um, me i'm going to switch this back to english but so you can work on it you got uh three languages you can choose you know i guess whatever is your native language that you'd prefer to work in uh and then likewise even though you do say german you know you can still translate into all these others and stuff. uh same thing for and this can be country and region specific for how you want dates uh presented uh well and that's usually only for the english and like the english uk that give you that option because some you know if you do select you know norwegian it's it's typically they've got a set format um so uh Last one's here, like calculate ages for the bride and groom. It's basically if you want that displayed or not. Um, let me just 
close down some of these tabs. Because like, um, you know, here for the marriage, it says, okay, at age 36, John married Jacqueline Lee uh, Bouvier. If, uh, let me just go to where I generated it. With no, basically it just eliminates that sentence. Um, it just says John married Jacqueline Lee Bouvier. It did not mention the age. Uh, then it's uh, same thing for if you want it for, you know, when someone passed away. Um, you know, here it says John died, you know, at the age of 46. Without it, um, It just said, okay, he died in Dallas, you know, on November 22nd, 1963. You know, so it's um, the same thing. It just eliminates that little part of the sentence. Uh, now, fact of fact. An events list. Now, this only applies to facts. Now, we haven't covered this yet. Um, but when you uh, generate facts, you you got ways to display. They typically default to the narrative format. Uh, but now, for this one, I did Ariel. I told that you can just have it listed as facts and events. Um, same thing like residents. I've never found a good way to put a residence in a narrative format. And then I'm going to, going to just copy that and paste to all arrival facts, just so it comes over to here and there. Uh, okay. So back here, group facts and events in alphabetical order. Uh, so that arrival and residence, those are the only two for that person that does it. It's basically if you want all the arrival facts together, then all the residents together. Uh, if it's unchecked, it's going to be in uh, numeric. It's, it's going to be in uh, date order, but you can have the facts intermixed. Uh, and so here's you know where the facts are not grouped. Let's go down here to um, oh no, oh, da, da, da. that's right. I had to go up a level on this one. Yeah, I had to go up a level to his parents. So for, you know, so here uh, for Rose Elizabeth, you know, these facts appear in date order. And here you can see, here's a thing here. I got two 1900s, so this is where it sh sh uh, stands out. It points out inconsistencies of the tree. And so here I've got two 1900 residence facts for uh, Rose. But anyway, uh, the point is, okay, they're in uh, in date order. If I tell it to, to group the facts, then here, okay, it puts arrival first since A is before R. Um, so it d does the arrival and then it groups the residents. So. That's what that one does right there. Um, now try to shorten place names. Uh, that was unchecked. If you do check it, that's where uh, like name named uh, 
sees like this, it will it will drop. Okay, so the second one should just say Boston City because the Suffolk's Suffolk and Massachusetts are the same. Um, so you should see. Yeah, so you'll see, yeah, so it just says Boston City now. Now then, this Lawrence Ward for Essex, uh, it's still in Massachusetts, but so it, it didn't drop. So it didn't include that. It included the county, Essex, but not Massachusetts because it's the same as before. And now, now and the, these also did not have the USA on them. So now this way, this one, because it... It's listed as Mass. It's still Massachusetts. This one had the USA date. These did not, or the USA country. These did not have the USA country, and so that's why it, it wasn't included. Um, and then, likewise, brought this is New York. This one, I believe, still did have the USA, but dropped because it's the same as up there. Um. And then the use, user defined short place names. And like I said, this is similar to what we covered last week under the book items um, for these, this options right here. It's similar other than uh, in this section, I think the always use place details overwrote uh, or no. The short place names overrode the same segments were uh, in here. If uh, short place names overwrites the user defined, uh, I did I did a thing for this Boston city. Uh, let me just get out of here because we were on rows here. Um, to set the short place names, you go into the place field. Let's go. Uh, Dean said, any chance of family tree maker and family book recording enough so you don't have to keep exiting? No. No, you can't. Not unless you'd have two instances of family tree maker. Because once you load up family book creator, you can't do anything with family tree maker. You could do, you could have another instance of family tree maker open, but then you can't have the same tree open. So. And the places are, well, I'll just put it on here. You know, you you can just put in, oh, okay, there, it finally went. So on this one, I did some things where I just said, okay, I want that just list as Boston MA. That's how you set a short place name. And now when uh, you generate the bucks, uh, da, da, da. Short place names. Now, see, it, it did not use that because go back here. I shouldn't have to go back into this too too um, many times. Um, The short and place names kind of overrides this user defined. So if you uncheck that and have that, then you'll get the short place names. Um, no short use defined. Yeah, then you'll get the Boston, Massachusetts. And then it doesn't shorten those, be, uh, you know, or just say this one is Boston. 
Uh, okay, so that's it for this section. Uh, let me just uh, let me just go through some of the questions here. Um, is there a difference between a fact note and a person note? Yes, there is. Uh, let me just go to John Kennedy here for his notes. See here, here's a person note. This is just attached straight to the person himself. Fact notes are actually attached strictly to uh, a fact itself. So like this birth fact, you'll see he's got, well, three birth facts. But like here's one where he's listed as born in Brooklyn, Massachusetts. Another one, Albuquerque, New Mexico. There's a note here. It says, no source information can be found, but some say it is true. Okay, so that might be something to do further research, but that is a fact note. Uh, and this is what the pencil icon, so anything here, so here with na uh, his name, here's his name fact note. So that lists that. Um, and likewise, if you click on a person, here's every note attach this person and tells you, okay, there's a person note, there's a research note, which is right here. And these are always private by default. That padlock is highlighted there. Um, birth fact name, you know, here's like an engagement. And the nice thing about working at it from the tree tab, if I want to say, oh, or maybe you know it's a typo or you want to uh, do something, you can just double click on this and boom, there's the engagement note. You can make whatever changes, but that's the same thing as going down here to the engagement fact and then clicking on the note, you know. And then likewise, there's a marriage note. So that's the difference. And you can also have relationship notes. So that's the difference between that. Uh, and yeah, you can only have really one person note you can attach you can add, keep adding stuff onto it same thing with research birth you know um okay yeah i answered that about if pdf slash a is selected we don't get the update all fields uh, and that's because yeah you don't have you don't have to uh the whole the whole purpose about whether or not to have the option to update fields is like I said with like Word, you're typically uh you're typically only gonna output to Word as if you're gonna be doing some edits that you can't do within Family Tree Maker or Family Book Creator. So by having it not update all the fields, it just you'll get the document sooner. Uh because if you're ever looking at when you're generating a book uh like i said this one the, this example doesn't take that long but like one one book i generate about uh three to four times a year no it takes 15 minutes to generate as a pdf and i don't know i never timed it but you know there's probably about three four of those minutes is spent just updating all the fields now if i was going to be doing uh editing and word later on why waste that time to update all the fields since after I do any edits, I'm gonna have to have Word update all the fields. So it's um, it's just a time saver. So um, yeah, coordinated enough. Oh, how can you list arrival dates to be shown after shown various residence dates? Uh, well, that's where if if this if you don't have a group facts and events in alphabetical order, then that will be listed in date order. So, like that first example, uh, arrival was listed first. Uh, yeah, facts not grouped. Oh, yeah, that's still the wrong one. Because it's rose. Um, yeah, see here you have arrival. They're they're in date order. 
I mean, you, you can't have, say, uh, and let's just say she did some other traveling where she she came back to the U.S. since, say, 1925. It lists residence 1920, arrival 1925, residence 1930, arrival 1936. Uh, if you have it sorted by group, all the arrivals would be first, then all the residents. Uh, if you'd want all the residents and then all the arrivals, uh, you'd have to do that in Word. Um, you either got them, you know, so they're grouped together in alphabetical order, so all the arrivals, all the residents. Or you can just have them listed in uh, numerical order. And that's all based on whether or not this, this option is checked, group pack, and events in alphabetical order. Um, oh, and one last thing is like if you ever like really botch up things, you can always reset settings. This will reset all the preferences to what their default settings were. So if you ever like this, so this is kind of like the, the day you first installed it, um, other than, yeah, it re resets all these. So, and that's also kind of why it's a good idea to save your settings periodically. Um, would PDFs and Word docs added to the book with FBC codes be included automatically in the TLC if I'll put in Word format? Or you need to add hidden codes in the added documents. You would have to, you would have to add those codes into it. And I think you could only be including Word documents. Uh because uh, I'm not sure if you bring in a PDF document. Uh, if those embedded codes would even work, or if they'd even if they'd even be, I don't even know if they'd be included in the PDF document. Um, and for the embedded codes, let's just let me um, let me just go back to this. Uh, No, that's, um, this one will have a lot of them. To view, like these embedded codes are talking about, so here's like John F. Kennedy. If you turn on the hidden codes, you're gonna see these like XE. Okay, so this is his name index. So this is what adds his name to the name index. Um, this right up here, this is what adds up this, John Fitzgerald Kennedy and Jacqueline to the table of contents. These are the hidden codes that they're talking about. And then likewise here, here's the hidden codes for the place fields. So you would have to include, have those, you would have to embed those into your Word document in order for, to bring in a Word document attached to someone have them automatically added into the table of contents and the um, um, name and place index. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, either put them in chat or you can unmute yourself. And likewise, you can always ask questions in the group too. So, okay, I'll go on to the next section. Uh, now here we're going to be doing the images. Uh, now, right now you'll see right now you can't do anything with the image quality. And that's all based on, uh, you know, because that's kind of set right here on the PDF conversion. Oh, yeah, I didn't really touch on this. Uh, the qual this is the qual quality you set for uh, the images. So uh, now if you got a low res Im image and you tell it do high quality print, well, it, ca it can't do more than what it's worth. So if you've got low res image, it's still going to be a low res image. Um, but the thing is, like to keep size down, 
Family Book Creator will reduce the image, uh, the image size, the image quality a little bit just to maintain size. Uh, but if you tell it, okay, I want to use image quality as specified, now you can change it. So now here you can bring it up to like 300 DPI image size. And now, like I said, this will increase the size of the book. Um, so just so you are aware, but you know, if you're getting some professionally printed, uh, like I said, I wouldn't ever do this as your go-to, uh, you know, I I would just kind of keep it, you know, down, you know, the standard, you know. Once you're once you're finally said yes, this is what I want, then you can bring up the quality and uh, for the images. So for right now, now tailoring. Uh, and this is covered uh, for, uh, you know, ta tailoring basically, and there's sections for the family chart, the narrative report, and then the photo album area. So let me just kind of cover that real quick here. Uh, this is the family chart area. Um, you know, the narrative report is, you know, down here. So like these images here. And then down below, here's their, uh, the photo album area. And then it's, then it's also dependent upon, you know, you can have separate things for whether they're attached to a person, a fact, citation, relationship. Uh, now, tailoring means if it's going to do any cropping, because none is going to take the image as is. Uh, now, if you've got a, square, a perfectly square image, these settings really aren't gonna affect anything. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure the difference between square and passport. I mean, I'm sure it's like dimensions might be slightly different. May a passport's not perfectly square. Uh, but if you, uh, I'll, um, well, I'll show you in, um, oh, come on. You'll see here, here's, uh, I do, uh, these are all like square images right here, but like you'll notice this uh, marriage photo, it's it's not square. So this is a good one that I'm showing the difference uh, for if you do, uh, let's see here, there's an address. Reasoning. Okay, yeah. So now if I tell it to do uh I'm I'm playing with this. So now if I tell it, no, I'm here to do a square top, so it's gonna make it a square image and it's gonna uh take the top part, you know, for to make it a perfect square. Um and um uh, let's see here. No, that wasn't the right one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the one that was standard. Now, see here, square top. Now, see it's square and it caters to the top. So you can kind of see the difference here between the two. That's no, that's no tailoring. That's uh, to the top. If I set it... Uh, where middle, it's going to take the middle and it'll just chop off the top and bottom. And then see there, you'll see, okay, their heads are cut off. So sometimes it's like, if you ever notice a picture where it's like, okay, the cropping's weird. Well, odds are it's not a square photo and uh, you'll want to play with uh, the cropping um, and pa passport is very similar. Um, 
and and then these uh, examples I didn't notice any difference between the passports. Um, but yeah, there is a fact here that does explain it. Uh, you know, the fact section. You know, and actually this, so this is, yeah, so yeah, there's actually a good thing here. You know, so none, square top, square middle, oh, passport photo. Okay, oh, passport is a three by four format, okay. So, and then likewise, yeah, this is just good for, you know, if you're doing border styles for no border, rounded, circle, elliptical. Um, yeah, so border styles, landscape, and then color effects, whether you want none, color, sepia. Uh, if, you, if you're doing a book, and say, you know, you're not going to be printing in color. You could automatically just have it go to uh, uh, grayscale. So. Yeah, that's like the um, border for, yeah. And then the color effect. And I did do some. Yeah, examples with borders on air, you know, where I did I set the wedding, wedding to elliptical, the family chart to round, and then this is rounded corner down here, and I set those like this where. Portraits were circle, relationships were elliptical, and those are rounded corners. And then uh, same thing with color effects. You know where I did this sepia, I did these grayscale, because if you noticed uh, before, you know, this picture was in color. Now they're in grayscale, that's sepia. So. Uh, and then, like I said, then it's like the same thing. It just goes through all these different for where the pictures are. So, uh, so okay. Um, If I'll, uh, okay, someone else, let's see here. Bonnie asks, is there a video past weeks of your class listed someplace? Yeah, on our, in our Facebook group is our YouTube channel and it's posted there. Uh, and I also posted, uh, let's see, where is, um, you know, if you go, go in the, Featured post area, scroll down, let's see, that's the class. Here's Stefan's post. This is always good to look to see where the the current uh, versions of Family Book Creator. So that's built 1700 for Windows, 830 for Mac. Um, just un unpin those, those are old ones, so. Uh, and I must have gone through it. Oh, yeah. This post, yeah, so there's a link right here. It goes right to the YouTube channel. And, you know, there's the first one right there is the Family Book Creator Settings class one. So, and I also posted that, uh, I believe I also made a post saying that the first one was up there. But it's it's just easier. Just go to the YouTube channel and they'll always be there. You can even um, subscribe to it and get notified when new videos are on it. 
Um, I'll do that and like some charting companion ones, but right now I'm concentrating just on Family Book Creator. So that's where all videos will be now and in the future. So um, if I'll put into PDF, there is an option to set the FPC to reduce the size of the output document. Yeah. In my experience using, okay, full version of Acrobat, you can further reduce the document size, yeah. So, if creating a PDF to go to a printer, is it better not to reduce size? I would say no, especially if you've got images and especially in color, because that you basically want. Uh, each printer can be different, but usually they want the 300 DPI images and stuff. So, the impulse for Jackie, what does the arrival date of 1936 signify when her residents were from the early 1900s? Well, that she, that was just an arrival thing where she would have been traveling overseas. And like I said, it's, that was just in the generic Kennedy file I had. So, uh, you know, you're going to be doing this from your data. So, it's like, It'll be whatever you want it to mean. So, um, so yep, for YouTube, yep, it's JF Aussie. Um, is there a way to have your pictures associated with facts that show up in order? Sometimes I have census records. Yes, and there is a fact on, uh, let's just go here. This is the Family Book Creator site. Click on support and frequently asked questions and there's a lot of let's see uh, well, there's that me let's see and categorize how do I include Oh, I know. It's it's in the manual. Um, let me just. Um, hang on here. Yeah, on the FBC. Well, here I know there's a different way to do it. If you go to the download section, a family book creator, and like I said, from uh, um, if you look at like Stefan's posts, one of Stefan's posts, uh, let me go back to featured here. You know where he does it. This first link always takes you right to the download area. So you can select your version. I'm using the Windows 2019 version. Uh, download this, the, the, the user guide. It is, I can't stress enough to download that. And in it right now, there there is even down here on media or the photo albums. Sort order for images. So I'll tell you how how uh, how they are, but then you can also put them in date order. Um, you can also arrange them manually. So, like I said, if you want to on the person's media, you know you can. Uh, Yeah, you can actually put in a date, you know. So if you know when this was date was, it's like uh, then it will put them in date order. You can also uh, let's see, can we do it this? Um, no, 
you can also ar arrange them uh, manually this way. You know, you can use these arrows so you can. Yeah, it's going to think for a while. But you can rearrange them using these arrow keys. But this is kind of described here in, in the manual. So, so I, I find it very easy because the bookmarks for, you know, questions what you want. Uh, they're there. So, um, and that's kind of a different thing. You Usually it's generally just put in the, the dates. You know, especially for census, just put in 1940 for, or, you know, 1930, 1920. So, um, are there any other questions? Because uh, that's uh, basically about it. Uh, we've covered those two tabs. Yeah, we're just over an hour. Um, so, feel free to unmute if you got any questions. Yeah, John, uh, I got a couple. Uh, in the fact notes, uh, like for an example, um, where it says, like, mine says, like, James Ray married so and so at a certain date. Is there a setting where you can change the, where it would just give his first name instead of the first and middle or? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, and that will be covered. Um... Uh, I mean, I'll touch it right now, but yeah, on the March 8th class, that's where I'm going to be going over the name format. But that's under preferences, name format. Because here it's like, you know, we're, okay, title, family chart, primary. This is where you'll do it. And then it's going to go to like repeated mention of the name. This is where you'll want to change that. Um, You know, th this is where how all the names are displayed. This is where they are. It's all on this name format. Um, and, and yeah, and that's March. Yeah, in the March 8th class, it's, yeah, I believe that's all. That's going to be one thing dedicated just to these right here. Okay. It's all on name format. So, but this is where it's done. So. Um, Gene asks, you covered the general tab. Help me remember what the second tab was. Uh, yeah, we're on general. Then we covered the images tab right here. So. And I was, uh, how I was dividing these out is I was just kind of going based on how much time I think these would take. So that's kind of how some of them did because it's like I didn't want to go general the name because I knew name would be a class unto itself. Same thing like report and styles because there's different things that can determine like see right now this one these are hidden and so anyway. Are there any other questions? Yeah John when you were going through um, one of your trees I, I couldn't, um, I'm in Facebook creator, so I didn't want to leave, leave it, but I saw a photo dark room. Was that an extra feature or was that just built in and I never noticed it? That's built in the family tree maker. Uh, cause that, yeah. Cause if, yeah, if you bring up the detail tab, I mean, this is. They've got things, you know, where you can lighten, dark, and stuff like that. But that's kind of beyond the scope of this group. I'd say go to go to okay. the family, go to live chat or the family tree maker users group, and they can cover that more. I mean, the the family tree maker users group probably has a guide on it. Um, okay, thank you. So I just saw it now, so I haven't researched. I just noticed when you were running through. So yeah, I look that, at that. that started I... that started with Family Tree Maker 2017, uh, and then I think that it got expanded a little in 2019. Um, so 
And my second question, are you doing a tree for the Kennedys or are you related? No, this is just a generic tree just because it's a well document. So I'm not too worried about exposing any personal information because they are okay. a very public, well-known family. It's, you know, so no, this is just a sample tree. Uh, I mean, we're all related in some way, but I, I wouldn't know if I'm related or not. It's, all right. Thank you. I can maybe I'm check on Family Claude, Search. That's why I was just curious. I could check on Family Search and maybe because they've got like a famous people you might be related to, which you sometimes have to take with a grain of salt. <laughs> but anyway, so any other questions or, I'll, or else I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh, I will just uh, maybe mention next week. Uh, I'm planning on uh, going back to the book items area. And I'll be covering uh, the title page, call a phone, dedication, forward, uh, table of contents, introduction. I won't be doing this main part, but I'll be doing the indexes. So um table of contents there isn't too much indexes it's low and then these five pages the options are all the same for all five pages so you know it's uh that that's why it's like ooh seven tabs rather than before we're only doing two but it's really only about three tabs and like i said table of contents well you can kind of see there's two options so it's you know Anyway, well, thanks for coming, and we hope we'll see you next week. So, and like I said, later today, this link will be posted on the YouTube channel. So, enjoy.